Hello, my name is Mark Murky. I'm the director of Fabergé and Russian Works of Art at Doyle. And I'd like to share with you a beautiful collection of Fabergé from a Westchester private collection and two other private collections. These works represent uh, Fabergé's two main centers of production, St. Petersburg and Moscow. And they represent really a difference in two cities and two styles. These three works represent Fabergé's St. Petersburg branch. Uh, Fabergé's St. Petersburg branch really drew on historical European styles, mainly from the French Louis XV and Louis XVI periods, also going into the European neoclassical and sometimes empire periods um, of the early 19th century. Starting with this gold, simple reeded gold cigarette case, which is inset with an enameled coin from the period of Catherine the Great, who reigned in the late 18th century. And moving over to this footed cup, which is in a gold mount. The gold mount uses 18th century rokai ornament, typical of the Louis XV period, and incorporates this native Russian hardstone, which is a quartz. So it's an interesting combination of a historical style, but incorporating a Russian element as well. And then moving over to this small gum pot and hand seal, which is made of gold and a mottled jasper. Again, drawing on very much of a Louis XVI style, the late 18th century neoclassical period. But again, incorporating a Russian hardstone, probably cut uh, and polished in St. Petersburg at the time where there is a high level of production of hardstone carving. And these three objects to this side represent Fabergé's production in Moscow, where the production in St. Petersburg drew on historical precedents, mainly from Western Europe, France in particular. The Moscow branch drew on Russian precedents using native Russian forms and Russian vernacular ornament. Starting with this small casket, which retains its original box. It's a native Russian form of casket with this very pitch roof. The material is silver and silver gilt, and also cloisonne enamel. Now this piece is a collaboration of the best enameler who was working in Russia at the time by the name of Fyodor Rukert. Now Rukert was looking at native Russian forms and Russian vernacular ornament, but by this period, which represents his late period, he was looking to reinvent these forms and reinvent this type of ornament. So you see native vegetal ornament, floral motifs, etc., but they're abstracted. Moving on to this small photograph frame, again an example in silver, silver gilt, and cloisonne enamel, and you see the same type of ornament that's used almost avant-garde type of ornament. And then moving over is this Russian kovsh. A kovsh is a native Russian form. Originally the form was a dipper, a functional form, and it became very much of a Russian symbol in the decorative arts. By this period, it was purely a decorative object. This is also a collaboration of Fyodor Rukert and Fabergé. Rukert and Fabergé have taken a typical Russian form of a kovsh and updated it and made it more modern, given it an exaggerated, tall, handle, angular and geometric shape, and you could see this native floral ornament that was used in Russian decorative arts for centuries, but it's updated, it's made more abstract. The color palette has shifted from jewel tones, different shades, incorporating earth tones. So in summary, we have a tale of two cities, Fabergé in St. Petersburg and Fabergé in Moscow. St. Petersburg looked back to the 18th century, mainly France of the Louis XV and Louis XVI period, and catered to its clientele who was the Russian imperial court and those who were closely associated with it. Fabergé Moscow, by contrast, did look back to native Russian forms, Russian vernacular ornament, but updated those, those forms and that ornament uh, for the 20th century. Fabergé Moscow catered to a wealthy merchant class in Moscow who wanted Russian objects that were very Russian in spirit but wanted something new and wanted to look forward rather than look back.